Our path finding algorithm use the annotated ASTAR search. It is hosted on the Plus server and documented using Open API. In addition, it is modified to account for direction as well as multiple objectives. Furthermore, the arena is represented as a 200 times 200 grid instead of a 20 times 20 grid. We also trace the turns using a midpoint circle drawing algorithm. And lastly, we also pre-compute and cache obstacles bounding boxes. So a combination of all these factors results in a more optimal path as well as better performance. In fact, we managed to reduce the time taken to compute the path from 3 minutes down to around 4 seconds. So I need a robot for this, the newest robot. All I have for now is this simulator. Oh, you meant the simulator where you... For the simulator, we built the web page using Next.js and Tailwind CSS. We used an open API generated client to interact with the Flash server to obtain the response from our pathfinding endpoint. The robot is mapped out in a circle with the yellow box at the front representing the camera. The red border at the edge of the obstacles signifies the direction of the obstacles. From the response, we are able to obtain the series of steps the robot takes and we can map out each incremental step by clicking on the page button to see the robot move. When the robot takes an image of the obstacle, the yellow box turns to red. This gives us a better idea of the position of the robot at each step. Yeah, by one robot. Where do I get one? SD Metropolis. I'm busy. You go. Okay. as the central communication hub for the entire setup, integrating the Android, STM32, pathfinding, and image recognition algorithms. We implemented the training functions to ensure seamless and asynchronous communication between the devices. For the Android tablet and the RPI utilized, the SPP, which is a serial port profile protocol via a classic Bluetooth connection to exchange data with each other. For the STM32, it actually employs the virtual COM port through a USB serial connection, enabling the RPI to send and receive instructions and acknowledgements to and from the STM32. For our pathfinding algorithm, we utilize an open API client powered by a Flask server to enable our RPI to transmit optical and robot locations and directions to retrieve the shortest path to reach all the obstacles from the algorithm. From the image recognition, we utilize UDP and sockets to stream the live feed from the Pi camera and use YOLO V8 for image detection. To maximize the utilization of streaming capabilities over capturing individual images, we use the timestamp interval from the moment robot indicates that it is acquired an image. By analyzing the timing of images encountered in the stream, we identify the largest overlap as the detected image. As a result, images can be identified as long as they have been encountered at any point during the stream. Do you want to learn about the magical shapes you can recognize? What? I want the robot. But I can teach you a magic trick. What magic tricks? Robot uses low V8, and you only look once real-time object detection algorithm, which provides fast response times for being a lightweight algorithm with reliable object detection. Robot specifically uses instant segmentation, a computer and vision task that identifies objects based on their outline shape. To enable Bobot to detect images in any environment, our dataset contains various types of training images and is augmented to enhance the outline of the shape of the object for better detection. Cool. Want to learn about this? We built this Android app using Java and it acts as an interface between the user and the robot. First, we establish a Bluetooth connection with Bobot's RPI. You can communicate with Bobot using this app by sending and receiving strings. By sending certain strings that the RPI recognizes, you can give Bobot information. Our Android app is intuitive and easy to use. Set start point is to select on the map where the Bobot is starting, for example, at the bottom left corner of the map. You can change the direction which the Bobot is currently pointing in with this button. You can even control the Bobot directly from this app by clicking the direction button. Obstacles can be placed on the map either by tapping on the grid map directly or by entering the XY coordinates along with its bearing. This information gets sent in a string to the RPI. Obstacle coordinates and bearing can be updated by simply toggling the drag obstacle slider and then dragging it to the correct position or out of the grid map to delete it. Obstacle bearing can be updated after toggling to change obstacle slider. The reset button clears everything on the map, while the save button stores the positions and bearings of all the obstacles on the map, which can later be reloaded onto the map using the load button. I've been looking for you! Tell me all I need to know about the robot! To minimize wheel slipping and jerking, Bobot will gently accelerate and decelerate to optimal PWM values. Bobot accepts commands with flexible speed, direction, steering angle, and target distance, so it is capable of driving almost anywhere. Commands sent to the robot are queued, and the steering angle and motor speeds at any moment depend on both the current and next drive command. This allows Bobot to turn smoothly into the next command without fully stopping, maintaining both accuracy and speed. Enough talking! I'm coming to take the robot off you! Hey. 